Brittany and welcome back to my channel. I feel like it's been forever. I missed y'all so much. And so today is Tech Tuesday. But first, if you're new here, I chat about tech, fashion, and lifestyle. So if that sounds like something that you're into, go ahead and click that subscribe button, baby. Come join us. We're having fun over here. So for today's Tech Tuesday video, I am going to give five hard skills. These are technical skills. I may add a couple of soft skills as well um, for you to become a data analyst. And so if you have checked out any of my previous tech videos, I'm going to link them in the description, um, but I've had a transition into tech, the five first steps when you're considering going into tech. So this is for any tech profession, any field. So I'm gonna link that up here. And I really wanted to start with those type of videos because, of course, I don't want any of you guys, any of my subscribers to feel that they have to do what I do. Um, you don't. <laughs> there are tons of tech fields out there. Like, I'm still learning new ones every single day. Like, there are new things every day that I learn that I'm like, oh, that seems cool. Like, I might want to do that. So, definitely um, come into it with a very broad um, mind and, of course, find what you love, but just you know what I say it can apply to other things but you don't have to be a data analyst um and then I also created a video of your of my tech journey so my journey I've been everywhere <laughs> before I finally got into tech and landed my official first tech job this year so I'm gonna link that up here as well um Samson's dog here um but yes so I'm gonna get straight to it so um if you don't know already, I'm a Virgo. And so as a Virgo, I have a notepad with my steps and with all of my things on there. Um, and I'm actually gonna guide you through kind of the thought process of these hard skills. And so the first hard skill, of course, is statistics. I um, checked out a couple of videos on YouTube about um, becoming a data analyst or data analytics, different things. And I honestly was shocked to not see a lot of videos. I feel like out of like the five videos I watch, no one mentions statistics. How can you do data if you don't know what data is? If you don't know what a sample size is, if you don't know what a statistic, what is statistics? So first, no statistics, no data. I'm not saying that you have to be just like a PhD in statistics, not even a master's in statistics. We'll talk about that later. Um, but. I think that you should have a good solid foundation of averages, mean, median, mode, statistics, right? Like what is data? What is the sample size? Um, and then as you continue on in your journey, then you can start, you know, learning a little bit more if you want to get deeper into it, which will really help you um, if you decide to get in advanced analytics and into data science. A lot of statistics will be really helpful for you to know. But for right now, make sure you just have a good solid foundation. You can literally oh, crack open a intro to statistics book. You can go on data camp. You can Google it. Khan Academy actually has, is a really good resource for um, statistics. So I'll link some in the description of some good statistics foundational learning opportunities. Um, but I think that's a great first step because when the data comes, you want to know exactly, um, you know, you want to be able to answer your questions effectively. And so I think that knowing statistics is so important for that. Next, I'm going to talk about some statistics some skill sets some hard skills that you're going to need to actually use your data to actually manipulate that data to solve any question that you have so you want to know excel excel is one of the introductory type of skills where you're going to be using data and you may not use a large amount of data because that's going to be the next skill I tell you but this is where most data is going to live most data no matter what type of job even if they have people that are programming doing different things everything is in excel I think a lot of people in higher positions older people they're just more comfortable with excel more you know just familiar with it and so excel is going to be around for a long time it's not going anywhere so um, I would definitely want to get really good in Excel and I would even stress going into introductory and advanced Excel. So knowing VLOOKUPs, knowing 
um, all pivot tables, pivot queries, um, all that type of stuff in Excel would be very, very beneficial. So that's kind of easing us into some larger data sets. So there are some data sets in Excel, it will completely crash. Like I've been there, like 2 million rows, it's not happening in Excel. So that's why Python, when you hear a lot of people talking about, do I need to learn how to code to be a data analyst? You really don't have to know how to code but learning how to code is definitely going to take you there it's going to take you further because that's when you get into the advanced analytics and you get into data science a little bit um not saying that you can't do great things as an analyst that does not know any python which majority of analysts do not know python so i think really really getting tight grasp on that excel um and taking it from introductory to advanced would be really beneficial and then then play around with some python and um python for data analytics and so you can see a lot of that on data camp khan academy as well this is um using python coding to help you do tons of amazing things with your data to be honest with you you can do um, just your basic exploratory data analysis with statistics but then you could also create uh, visualizations different things which is really cool and that actually takes me to the next thing so visualizations that is really the that's the gold of data analytics so when you think about um, a job like me on the job the people in my team they are data analysts or data engineers or software developers software engineers different people but the people who we're really answering the questions for the people who are really coming to us like hey can you help me see what's happening this quarter this month this year they don't know any data analytics really they they may not know python or excel or even statistics methods that you know so the visualizations is what really gives them a snapshot okay we made this much money this quarter okay we had this many things break this year or something right and so that's why the visualizations are so helpful and if you can nail down making these visualizations big bet they will love you they will love you so um there are two that i'm going to talk about people talk about some other things but there are two that i believe are worth knowing and that's tableau and power bi they're both very very popular visualization tools if you google them if you youtube them you're going to find tons of resources um i personally learned tableau and in, in my just education journey um, I learned Tableau and for my job that I have now, I actually was given a data set and a take home data problem and I was asked to create a visualization and present that visualization in my interview. Nerve wracking, right? I had to present it so many times too because I had like three interviews that day like with different people and I had to keep showing the, the dashboard. It was a lot. But um, I used Tableau. And they later told me that they actually use Power BI. I have not looked into it too much, but I heard the Tableau is more expensive. And so a lot of companies will use Power BI. Um, looking back, I think I personally, now it's going to be different for everybody. So don't, don't shoot the messenger. But I would really dig my time. If time is of the essence and we don't got time to waste, I would spend my time learning Power BI just because it is very popular in these larger industry companies they are using power bi more so i would just learn power bi but tableau is so fun it is so user friendly it the interface is like cuter to me if that makes sense um i love tableau like i long for a place that uses tableau regularly because i love it um and a, a lot of people like kind of hearing from different data analysts they say they're like just learn one and you'll be able to hop over to the other one no it's not like that it's not the same like that like of course yeah you may learn how you may know the overarching skill of how dashboards work but they're two completely different companies with completely different interfaces the way that you even use your your back end tables to create the visualizations it's different it really is so i really really would recommend um just think about it think about which one you want to hop into but of course you could be like me and just learn both right like why not learn both um it's really not that difficult 
and um, a lot of times jobs I was going to talk about this later but no one knows everything and so jobs are very forgiving for the most part about these types of things so of course my job they knew that I like Tableau and they told me we were using Power BI they have weekly Power BI sessions on Fridays where um, someone it's a guy he's like super good at Power BI he chats with us about Power BI um, and we go over dashboards. If you have any questions about your dashboard, you can ask. So it's a really good community. And I think either one that you go into, if you end up landing a job or you see a job um, job description and it says one, but you learn the other one, like don't let that discourage you at all because so many people believe that they're like super transferable. So they're gonna hire you. So I wouldn't let that deter you. Um, and I actually hopped over SQL. I meant to mention that after I mentioned Python. So SQL is the way that we are going to extract our data that is held in these huge databases. So most companies are holding their data somewhere else in these databases, all these tables, all of these things. And so SQL is how we're actually going to pull that down. And then you can either take that data into Python or into Excel. So SQL, in my opinion, I would put it at the top. I know I'm chatting about it at the end. Um, I'm backwards today. Um, but I would talk about it, or not talk about it. I would stress it at the top. You should know SQL first. SQL, SQL, SQL. Like, I would really like, if I could go back, so... A little bit about my journey. If you watched the video, I uh, did a data science boot camp. And if you're interested in knowing the difference in data science and data analytics and me get into all of that, let me know in the comments. But that's that's a whole nother video. So in that class or in that boot camp, we did not really touch on SQL as much because it is such an analytics thing. Um, and I do kind of regret that I wish that we we spent more time I know that when we were first getting introduced to the topic it was like right before COVID so it was like we learned a little bit in class we did like one project in class and then we went home and you know how crazy everything was like I had a tornado by my house right before that it was insane so I really wish that I spent more time with that and so SQL is actually something that in my spare time I'm always like if if i want to sit down and practice some coding on my computer i'm looking over here at my computer um i would do it in sql because i just feel like i got python and stuff under my belt it's really the sql that you really there you know of course there are levels when you're learning things and so just to be really sophisticated and um really advanced in my queries and things it's just something i'm always working on um but it's also something that unless you get a problem you may never like do some things that they have in it like um this side project that i've been working on with this education company they recently asked me to automate something and it was something i had never done before and so i learned like so much in sql just by going through those exercises um but i digress um, it's very important. SQL is so, so, so important. I stress that so much. And so I went through statistics, Python, Excel, visualizations, and SQL. Those are the five top hard skills for you to become a data analyst. And I believe in all of you. I think that you all can do it. Like I mentioned, no employer thinks that anyone knows 100% of anything. So really cut yourself some slack because you're learning these skills. I kept having this imposter syndrome and was like oh I'm not ready to apply for anything I don't know everything yet but eventually you just got to put yourself out there and they're really going to work with you and see the potential in you as you really show that you're aggressively going after your goals and you really want to learn more um so I would really stick with that also um some soft skills I guess a soft skill that just came to my mind as I was working on this is communication in my interview, I actually was asked, like, how do I feel about giving presentations? How do I feel about speaking to, you know, stakeholders and different people, even in advanced leadership, like vice president, president. And I was like, I don't care. Like, I'm cool with that. I chat all the time. I talk to anybody. And that is something that I really took for granted. But there are a lot of people, especially in tech, that do not really like to speak to a lot of people in public or do public speaking or 
you know give presentations to large groups and it's nothing wrong with that but i just have to say how much of an advantage that is if you do it has really put me in a position to just meet so many people in advanced leadership and um it's, that's just always a great networking opportunity so i suggest you all to really work on that if that is something that sounds interesting to you um kind of look into some techniques some communication skills and um, public speaking skills and techniques um but yeah that's everything those are my five real top hard skills for you to become a data analyst and i am so 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 committed to helping people transition into tech and if data analytics sounds like something you're into or even transitioning into tech sounds like something that you're into i am going to add a link in a description box where you can book chat with me um like a 30 minute chat with me because everyone's background and journey is so unique like how my journey in my video and how your journey may be depending on your previous work experience or education and that's really gonna shape which of these hard skills you need to work on more what order you may need to work on them so we can work on creating a whole plan for you anything so click that link in the comments or so click that link in the description um, so that you can plan your tech journey. So I'm super excited about that. I launched my data and tech consulting company last year, October 2020. Um, but a goal of mine has always been to add some type of career coaching, career counseling, consulting, whatever, <laughs> into that. And so I'm super excited about this. So make sure you click that link if that sounds like something that you'll be into and thank y'all so much again for watching remember to give me a thumbs up if you love the tech tuesday content and subscribe share everything <laughs> thanks bye Ooh.